Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today I'm going to review externalities, sort of with the goal of helping you with an environmental economics class, because in environmental economics we're talking about externalities a lot, especially when you talk about air and water pollution, so I just want to go back to the basics and review how externalities work. Timestamps are below if you'd like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get right into it. So just as a basic review, you might have seen externalities before, especially if you've taken an intermediate micro class, but basically externalities are a type of market failure, what happens is two parties are making a decision. Some third party that's not involved in that decision is going to be impacted by the decision the other two people make. Even though, again, they're not part of that decision, they're impacted by that decision. The two people making the decision generally aren't thinking about that impact on a third party, and that impact can be positive or negative. So as a basic example, consider it's Christmas time and your neighbor decides to put Christmas lights on their house. Well, by putting Christmas lights on their house, it actually makes the neighborhood look nicer. The neighbors and other people enjoy driving through and looking at all the lights, but when the neighbor decided whether or not to put lights on the house, they weren't thinking about other people's enjoyment of those Christmas lights necessarily. Probably they were just thinking, well, how hard is it to put lights on my house versus how nice will it look to me when I put lights on my house, and if it looks better to the person who is putting on the lights, they're going to put the lights on their house. So that's going to be an externality because the person, the neighbor, when they put on those lights, they're going to impact someone else who wasn't directly involved in whether or not that neighbor put lights on their house or not. Now on the flip side of that, just to be clear, it is not an externality for say me to say, well, when I put Christmas lights on my house, I get a positive externality because I make the neighborhood look better. I am not the one experiencing the externality because I'm not a third party. I was directly involved in choosing whether to put Christmas lights on my house or not. So I can't get an externality out of a decision that I directly was a part of. So hopefully that just clears it up a little bit but if it's a little confusing, feel free to drop something in the comments below. And so I think the easiest way to think about these externalities is with a graph. One thing in particular I want to focus on is when we tend to make a market decision, we tend to get a demand and a supply curve and we find where they cross and we say that's the competitive equilibrium. But part of our assumptions about why that competitive equilibrium is Pareto optimal or socially optimal is because we've assumed no externalities. And now we're saying, okay, well, hold up. What if there is an externality? And so the competitive equilibrium is not necessarily going to be the same as the social optimal allocation. It's not necessarily going to be Pareto optimal. We also want to show that on this graph. And so I'm going to start with a supply and demand curve. And then I'm going to tweak it. I'm going to label things slightly differently. And again, if there are questions as I'm going through, feel free to put that in the comment section below. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a basic demand curve. It's going to look like this. What I'm going to say is this demand curve is a marginal private benefit curve because that's the private benefit that people, the demand side, gets out of this transaction, whatever we're doing. Maybe again, maybe this is just Christmas lights, so I'm going to say Xmas lights. And so that is the benefit of each person in terms of putting lights on their own house. On the flip side, there's a supply curve, which is going to be sort of based on the cost of putting up lights, both in terms of getting it from the store and in terms of effort and time and all of that stuff like that. And so that's also a private cost, and so that's a marginal private cost. And so again, if we think there are no externalities, this is how many people are going to put lights onto their house right here, and this is going to be our Q star CE, or competitive equilibrium. And at that point, that is where marginal private cost equals marginal private benefit for all the reasons that we've talked about in your intro and your intermediate micro class. Okay, well now we're gonna say that there's this positive externality on the demand side, there's an extra benefit, because of course other people get to enjoy those lights. And so this marginal private benefit curve doesn't currently capture the fact that other people get benefits out of lights on someone's house. And those people who are getting those extra benefits aren't directly involved in whether a given person puts lights on their house or not. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to increase this demand curve, we're gonna shift this demand curve out by some external benefit. And so maybe this purple line right here, maybe this is the marginal social benefit. So this is the marginal social benefit of putting up lights because this is equal to the marginal private benefit plus the marginal external benefit where the marginal external benefit or the distance between these two demand curves right here, that difference is how much extra enjoyment other people get out of one neighbor putting Christmas lights up on their house. And so we can say that there's no extra costs, there's no external costs, so this is also a marginal social cost. And so now what you can see is we've got a marginal social cost, we've got a marginal social benefit, 
we can find when they're equal, and maybe I'll do this in orange. And so this point right here, this is going to be QSO, or the socially optimal level of lights on people's houses. And so if we look at this, we can see two things. First, the price, which I'm not really worrying about right now, is a little higher in the social optimum than the competitive equilibrium, and also the quantity is definitely higher under the social optimum than competitive equilibrium. So if we take a second and think about does this make sense or not, well, there's a positive externality, and so we're not capturing the benefit of putting Christmas lights on people's houses. If we did think about that benefit, then it would make sense that we'd want to put more lights on more people's houses, and so of course the quantity with an external benefit should shift to the right versus a competitive equilibrium, and if there's an extra benefit, we should be willing to pay more for people to put lights on their houses. And further, if we have a higher demand, if there's an extra benefit that we're not thinking about, we should be willing to pay more to put Christmas lights on our house than we do now. And so the price should be a little higher than under the competitive equilibrium. So all of that checks out. This is sort of how that graph works. Take a second, think about it. If you've got questions, put that in the comments below. And then we're gonna do another example where we do an external cost or a negative externality on the cost side. Okay, so now we're gonna do a negative externality or a negative external cost or an external cost. And so I'm gonna start with this marginal private benefit curve. I'm not even gonna call it a supply curve because when we're talking about externalities, then we know that that's a marginal private benefit curve. We know that this is a marginal private cost curve. We're gonna talk about externality on the cost side. So this is going to be equal to the marginal social benefit. We're not gonna do multiple. We're just gonna have one externality at a time. Well, if we think about a negative externality on the cost side, we could think about something like, I don't know, air pollution, in which a factory is making electricity. That's gonna be sort of a running example. And as they're making electricity, they're pumping out air pollution. Well, that power plant or factory is not thinking about the air pollution. They're only thinking about their own costs and their own benefits in terms of making electricity. And so if they did think about the extra costs, then the true cost for them of say making electricity would be something up here, where this is the marginal social cost, which is equal to that marginal private cost plus the marginal external cost. And what we would have is we would have our competitive equilibrium right here in green, and our social optimum would be to the left and up, which is right here. Because again, at this social optimal point, we want marginal social cost equal to marginal social benefit. And at that competitive equilibrium, we're always thinking marginal private cost is equal to marginal private benefit. And again, if we're just thinking, does this make sense or not? Well, because we haven't accounted for this cost, if we do account for the extra cost, if we do account for this marginal external cost, which again is the difference between these two lines right here, that is the marginal external cost. And if we thought about it, if we internalized it, if we use that in our decision making, we would realize that actually making this electricity is more costly than we originally thought. It's more costly when you account for people experiencing this air pollution. And so you would of course wanna make less of it. And so this quantity should shift to the left or the social optimum should be less than the competitive equilibrium in terms of quantity. And if it's more costly, people should have to pay more for it. And so the price should be higher under the social optimum than competitive equilibrium, which again, makes sense. This is exactly as if you shifted supply to the left because you have a negative externality. And so the true cost is actually higher than you thought it was. And so I think if you use this logic and you think about these curves in this way, it's gonna be really helpful both in terms of thinking about externalities, but also really helpful when we get into some of these graphs in environmental economics. So if you've got questions, if you've got comments or things that you want clarification about, feel free to put that in the comment section below. But otherwise, if this video or these videos in general are helping you out, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.